Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, well, yeah, um, like Liz said, um, thank you everyone for being here. Um, my name is Yasmin Rodriguez. So I'm one of the um, academic advisors for Criminology Law and Justice. Um, Wendy also is, she's in the room as well. Um, yes, yeah, so I just want to thank our student panelists uh, for being here. Um, Sarah, Afua, and Crystal. Um, so for Sarah, Afua, and Crystal, if we could just uh, keep the three of you in that order um, when speaking, um, just to make it easier. So um, with the questions, um, you know, just keep it a little bit more organized. So if the question ap doesn't apply to you, then you could just tell the other person um, to go um, that's after you, um, just to keep it in order. Um, yeah, so like Liz said, um, for everyone in the room, if you can ask the questions and put them in the chat. And then I also have some questions prepared as well. Um, but before we get that started, if we can have um, the three of you introduce yourselves. So if you could please um, just share a little bit about yourselves, um, what you're involved in, and yeah, just tell us a little bit about your experience at UIC. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm a third year at UIC. I'm also, I'm majoring in criminal law and justice. I'm also a research assistant for the Department of Criminal Law and Justice. And this is actually my third year being a research assistant with Professor McCarthy. And we're currently um, researching how like the pandemic had an effect like on domestic violence. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Hello, my name is Sophia Usuansa. I'm currently on my last semester of my undergrad studying criminology, law, and justice on the pre-law track. Um, I transferred from Julia Junior College um, in December 2020, then went, went to um, UIC right in the pandem pandemic time. Um, during my time at UIC, I, was, I became a Castillo Law Scholar, a Benish LSAT Scholar, a recipient of the Dean's List. Um, I have a, I'm a mentee of the attorney, Monica Lorenti, and I also inter interned in two internships, which is the Chicago Justice Project, as well as the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. And yeah, <laughs> I'm also the president of Criminology Law and Justice as well. Crystal, we can't hear you that well. Oh, sorry. I'm going to try talking louder. How about now? Is it better? It's better. Okay. Um, my name is Crystal Malakias. I am a third year. I'm majoring in psych and CLJ. And I am currently an intern with in Illinois Perk, working in the new voters, uh, voters campaign, as well as I'm a research fellow at Urban Public Policy Fellowship. Great. Well, thank you, um, three of you, for introducing yourselves. Yeah, we could just we can get the questions started. Um, yeah, so if anyone in the room has any questions, you can feel free to unmute yourselves or definitely put them in the chat. Um, just to kick it off and get questions started, I will ask some questions that have already been prepared, and then um, yeah, we could just go from there. So the first question is, how long did you wait to select? CLJ as your major? It actually took me, I went into UIC as a nursing major and then I took a class with Dr. Beth Ritchie and it was my freshman year, second semester. And I knew it was something that interested me and I would go to class, ask questions. And like, I knew like I would go to other classes, but I wouldn't be as like interested or want to learn more. Cause I used to go to office hours, ask questions. And that's how I knew that was a major for me. Thank you. Um, in my case, I realized in high school actually, I was granted the opportunity to go into a local program and it's more so like a program where you're taking college credits. Um, and I decided to take a criminology class. And ever since then, I fell in love with criminology and everything else with that. Um, well, in my end, I was a pre-med when I first came in here and I wasn't liking the classes. I felt like a little dread in my end. Um, but then I was recommended taking field like CLJ 101 and I took it and then I was, I felt more engaged in the class. I was looking forward to classes and the material 
engaged me and I was wanting to, I was looking into future classes and that's when I was like, okay, I think this is gonna be my career path. Awesome, thank you for sharing. Uh, it seems like all of you have very different experiences too, <laughs> um, but choosing your major, which is great. So it looks like we're getting some questions in the chat. So how many different CLJ classes are there and what are you actually learning? So if you wanna just you know talk about um, your favorite classes that you've taken or specific, those specific electives that you like and yeah. There's a few CLJ classes. One of my favorites is um, CLJ 101 and it's with Dr. McCarthy. And another one of my favorites was, I believe, 200, 210. That one is also interesting. I recommend taking them. So for me, my favorite class at UI, there's a lot of classes um, in general for CLJ majors, um, but I took a criminal law class. I'm not sure what number it was, but it was a Professor Lippman. And we really dissected the laws and being able to um, attach like the law into like real life scenarios, especially with um, the current case, well, not the current case, but um, with Floyd, so George Floyd. So stuff like that was pretty interesting for me because I could actually analyze certain cases. Um, for me, I really like CLJ 101 with Mr. McCartney too. I think it was just a good class. I also like CLJ 356, which is community corrections. Uh, I liked how it was during, um, it was last semester and I really enjoyed it. It was with Professor Jones. So those were the ones that come right into my mind. Okay, awesome. Thank you for sharing. Okay, well, I'm excited to know this one um, myself. So what careers, um, do you want to pursue after college? So where, what are you looking to go into? I'm actually applying to law school in September. I'm currently taking my LSAT. I'm either planning to be a criminal lawyer or an immigration lawyer. For me, I'm actually, after graduation, I'm taking a gap year. I was looking into becoming a youth development specialist. However, plans changed and I'm going to study for my LSAT exam and then apply for law school and actually become a family lawyer. Um, for me right now, I'm looking into grad school because um, like I mentioned before, I'm like in studies as well. So I want to work with the youth and like the correction area. Um, so that's my plan is working on right now. I'm looking into grad school. Uh, Crystal, what specific uh, grad programs? I was looking at social work because I feel like that gives me um, work plans into like the education and the law department. It could be both of them. So that's what I'm looking at right now. Awesome, thank you. Okay. All right. And the other question. So, well, and then you, the three of you did share um, these experiences in the beginning, um, but if you want to just touch a little bit more on them in more detail. Um, so while majoring in, the, in this field, uh, were there any internships or outside experiences that you've done or you're currently doing? If so, what kind? Yeah, so last semester I did an intern at a law office and I want to see if the field of law was really for me. And like with that experience, I know it was a field that I wanted to go into and advance more in. Yeah, for me, um, I've done a couple of interviews. I know I talked touched based on it um, with Chicago Justice Project for the Urban Public Policy Fellowship Program as well as um, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission as a legal intern. And then I also um, am doing an independent study with Jessica Bird on the Fifth Amendment as well. Um, like I mentioned before, the Urban Public Policy Fellowship, uh, I was able to apply to that one where you get to do a study of your own area that you like. And right now I'm looking into barriers in the youth. And I also know I'm looking into like what's the next 
steps. And I know that there's an organization called Animal Justice Corps. And I'm looking into that where um, you work with um, people who are trying to go into courts and helping them, giving them guidance on what it is from small to something bigger. Can I jump in and ask a, a follow-up question? Of course. So these are all amazing opportunities that everyone is sharing. Can you talk a little bit about how you found some of these experiences? Yeah, so I would look like I was looking at Indeed. That's how I found my internship. And I also was looking at for another internship to do like next semester in the summer. I was looking at like the UIC handshake. There's like many internships, like you can search keywords like within your major and like it'll give you like a list of internship and like you can do something that's close by and you can like put a certain mileage. Um, in my case, um, because I transferred out on my, my second semester of my sophomore year, um, I in the pandemic, hit, I really didn't get the opportunity to like look into like handshake or anything else like that. Um, but I actually utilized my resources and actually um, emailed all my professors and TAs to see if they have any opportunity for me, as well as my mentor um, at Northwestern University. Um, I actually got back from just Joseph Fields from the AAAN, um, which is um, the African American Academic Network. Um, and he actually introduced me to the Urban Public Policy Fellowship Program, in which I actually be, was able to get into um, the Child Justice Project in. Um, and then for my other internship, it was more um, on the uh, pre-law society, um, the board where they email us every couple of weeks on which uh, internship is available for students. Uh, for my end, I was, I registered for uh, a little yes, um, boot camp that they have, like internship boot camp with Lauren. I found that very helpful because she gave you like the whole process of what it was, fixing, tailoring what you're looking into it. As well as I heard the, for my fellowship, I heard it from Lattice, which is the Latino American Recruitment Education. Um, I heard from them and then I just kind of like follow through. And also like um, I talked to my advisors and asked them like if they had any advice. Okay, so the next question, um, so I'm still looking at, into the chat, so please continue um, sending those questions in. So the next question is, what are some favorite things about being a CLJ student? So please share any department resources um, that you've taken advantage of or any things like that. Um, I would say like the professors you have, like reach out, go to office hours. They're like great resources. And like, even if you don't want to talk about like classwork or you just want to talk about how to advance and like more opportunities, I definitely recommend going to those um, office hours. I second everything that Sarah said. Um, also just like creating a professional bond with all your professors and teachers um, and TAs are just really important and it's essential. Um, not like if you don't use it now, you might probably use it in the long run. Um, and they love to talk about your interests, especially if they're talking about something in the class and you're really interested in it. They love to discuss it because they see that their student is actually interested and in diving deep into the topic. Um, another research I used was the CLJ department um, as well as Criminology, Law, and Justice, Student Society, and uh, the Pre-Law Society. All those resources are pretty great to use, and they actually help you and aid you in anything that you really need. I would agree with them as well. Like, they completely took everything I was going to say. Like, those researchers, go for it. I went to ask for help, and, like, they gave me so many guidance on where to go and what were the next steps. Like, the Pre-Law, just your advisors with the department, like asking your TAs because they're literally right there where you were. Even the professors were in the same place. So I just would have to agree with them. Um, Afua, can you touch base a little bit more about the student organizations? Yes, so um, I can touch a lot more on criminology on justice since I'm the president of that org. 
But um, Criminology Law and Justice Student Society is more so a platform for our students to come together and have networking opportunities as well as um, be able to get access to like firsthand internships, um, as well just discussing CLJ as it is um, and this different career exploration. So I know that CLJ is so broad and everybody really needs um, time to actually look into how like what career I really you really want to get into. Um, so that's what we offer and um, yeah, so if you're ever interested, you can always email me. I can drop the email in the chat or anything else like that. Um, so to go back to um, more of the major exploration um, portion of um, CLJ. So how did your family play a part of your decision-making and how did you balance your interests with some of the values and interests of your family when choosing TLJ as, as your major? So for me, my family just like advised me to go after like what I'm passionate about and just like what's like in my interest, not to like look around and see what people recommend for me, but to see like what I like as a person. Um, in my case, I will say that when I told my family that I wanted to be a CLJ major, they were pretty confused on what it was and were confused on what career I could actually take on with um, the major. And I know that off the bat, they were like, oh, do you want to be a police officer? Do you want to be a lawyer? Um, just like those um, different careers. Um, and in order for me, like I wanted to do it really badly and I didn't really want to go into the medical route. So I chose to do that path. Um, but in the long run, I realized that um, it's my own path and it's something that I really want to do. But in order for me to balance the two, I actually wanted to go to law school, which is something they actually wanted me to do too. Um, but yeah. Um, I was a pre-med before like I chose to change it. So I publicly told my whole family, I was like, I'm going to become a doctor. And so like, that's what they were of me so I was kind of nervous to tell them like I kind of don't want to go that route no more but then I just thought I was like oh well, you know it's just not something that I like and I'm just like I don't, I don't think I want to put myself through that force it and end up with the long career to force them to um so I decided to tell my family and they were very supportive they were telling me that I should choose something that I want to do and I looked into and I was passionate about so they just told me to, because I'm a first generation and they're like, I don't know how to help you, but just go ask for help to your advisors, your teachers. So for me, it was very um, nice and very, um, very supportive, but I was a little nervous of declaring like, I don't want that no more. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like this question goes great um, going right after um, your response, Crystal. So what is one piece of advice you can share with current students or prospective students um, when choosing a major? Mine would be like explore your different options. And like if you're not sure about like one major, like to go find an internship that's like in that major. And like explore the other resources you have, talk to professors, talk to friends, talk to family members, get an idea. And honestly, I did like so many like quizzes for majors online because like it was hard for me in the beginning to choose a major. And that didn't really help me until like I had hands on experience in the field by the internship. Yes, I second everything Sarah said again. Um... For um, me, an advice that I would just give you guys is that do something that really is something that interests you, no matter about any of other opinion or anything else like that, do whatever you want to do, um, because it's your life that you're living and nobody else's life. Um, I know that it's sometimes hard trying to figure out what your career, what your interest is and stuff like that. So taking those quizzes, and I know that uh, UIC actually offers some as well, um, just to find out which one is the best for you. So if anybody is undeclared in here, um, you can actually take those quizzes with Laura and Gallagher, and she's pretty helpful as well at the Career Advising Center. Um, I would also agree, like, looking into the internship, because that's, I'm a person who learns from hands-on, and you get to experience it and see, like, all the good and bad. I would also say, like, doing informational interviews, I found them um, very helpful. 
um, to go for it as well because it's what what is the bad thing to say no or it's probably because they have a busy schedule so I would just say like reaching out to people who have the your ideal job or they're in the same route and they tend to be very helpful and they always want to help so that would be my recommendation great advice <laughs> thank you and what does it feel like to be in the right major. So now that you know, um, you know, all three of you, now all of you know what you want to do and you're all, you know, solidified in your major and everything, what does it feel like to be in the right major? Because before you know what it felt like to not know what you wanted to do. Yeah, before selecting a major, I was always stressed about like trying to pick a major or like I would select a major, like I was pre-nursing, like I would go to my class and I'd not like it. It wasn't something that interested me. But now when I go to my classes, it's something that interests me. And like, I wanna do extra research about what we learn in class. And I actually go to office hours for like my other science classes. I didn't wanna go to office hours. I don't wanna learn more. But for this major, it's like something that I love. In my case, at first, I felt like I was more lost in the abyss and I had no idea what would be my interest. And, um, so afterwards, after finding out that I actually enjoy criminology, um, I kind of felt like somewhat in some way that in the long run, I'm going to fulfill my purpose. Um, so yeah. Um, before, I felt like I was like, kind of like an outsider because I felt like I would ask people and they're like, oh, I love this part of like, you know, creative med. And I was like, I can't really. Um, but now, like, everybody has been saying I feel so much engaged like I actually speak out for like more information like I said previously like I'm planning on classes for the next semester and then I look into it and see like oh this is something I could see myself enjoying so I feel like it's just engagement and wanting to reach out to learn more great so we're getting uh questions in the chat again um so have you ever felt like it was difficult? Um, have you ever been in a difficult situation where you were um, wanting to drop out or had thought about that? I think everyone's been in a situation where a class is like too hard for them or like you're not understanding like the classwork or the assignments. But like you just have to push yourself, go to office hours, utilize your resources. That's an advice I give. For me, um, there was a, a time where I actually just wanted to like stop um, doing CLJ, um, but it was more so the fact that I, I put my schedule, I packed it too much. Um, on a personal note, I actually dropped the class because I knew that I could not take on that workload. Um, so yeah, but I didn't drop out, so I'm still here. <laughs> I would say yeah, I feel like um, I feel like everything, like at one point school is still so stressed and it's always like, oh, I'm just gonna drop out and stuff like, um, but like I, it's because for me is I was just so stressed. I had so much work and I was in managing my time and like the, I'm procrastinating to the max and I was, it is not the best. I do not recommend it to your work on time. Um, so I just was, I went to go seek help. I went to uh, aid. Uh, it's also another resource and they like help me plan like even the simplest things like going to the syllabus and getting a calendar and putting the, the assignments that line like something that simple like really helped me out going to the TA's office hours getting help it's just I feel like the little things that you feel like you, you, you're like oh I don't want to bother them because that's what I thought and I was like no you know they're there for help and you're like if you know, if they can't help us because everybody has to be, everybody learns different, they might direct you to a new resource. So I feel it's just like, I am a big advocate on seeking help because it's very helpful. Yeah, thank you for sharing um, all the different resources and things too. Yeah, that's great. And um, I feel like the next two questions can be answered together if all three of you can just talk about your different experience um, pre-pandemic, if you were here um, at UIC before you transferred, um, and um, just now how your schedules are. So how many students are in your classrooms, both 
in your CLJ courses and out? Um, and then are they virtual or how are most of your classes hybrid or you know on campus, et cetera? So pre-pandemic, most of my classes were like a range from 100 to 150 students. And now my classes are like 30 to 40 students. That's in person. And if they're more, there's a lot of classes that are online. For example, CLJ 114 and another class with CLJ 220 with Jessica Bird. Like any classes above 50 students, they're more online for CLJ courses. <laughs> Yeah, um, same for same as what Sarah said. My classes um, pre-pandemic when I only had like two months, um, actually having in-person classes, it was about 200, 150 to 200 students in a classroom. Um, and I had only one class, one in-person class this year. And that was about 30 students and we were all spaced out. It, it had like um, little red, red circles saying sit here and stuff like that. Um, but most of my classes are actually online. I know that a lot of the teachers are actually not even in state, they're in different states. Um, so yeah. I would say for me, before pandemic, it was lecture and discussion class. So the lecture was like 100 plus students and then discussion, it was like a smaller group. Uh, so you get both, like both environments and that. Uh, but right now they're like, a 50 people and for the CLJ classes that I'm teaching right now, they're all in person, but I know some other classes are hybrid. Yeah, and I know that there's a range depending on your schedule and everything. So that's why I wanted all of you to share your experiences. Um, sorry, the sun is hitting me right now at this moment. Um, okay, so. Let me see if there's any in the chat. No, not right now. Okay. So what is a, oh, what class within this major was very fun for you? So what is your, yeah, your most fun course that you've taken? So in last year, I did take a class with Professor D. Wald Ronald. And it, was, it talked about the law. He is a federal prosecutor. So it was like really interesting to have a federal prosecutor teach the class. It was like really different than having like a regular professor. For me, it was the criminal law class, like I said, um, but now it's more so my independent study because I get to actually dive in deep into what I'm really interested in, which is bill and bond reform, so. I would say right now, I'm going to mention to the 356. I really like that one. Uh, how it's like it was an area where I was interested in the community and incarceration. So I was that was interesting. The readings were engaging. Uh, but also, like my fellowship, I'm working more with the law department. So that's I'm finding engaging, like looking for like the articles and then getting the data. Great, thank you for sharing. I've heard great things about those. And what's the best kept secret if, of a great resource on campus? So I know that a few of you have mentioned um, a few resources on campus. Are there any others that stand out to you of another secret one that um, you've utilized a lot since you've been at UAC? I think like one that is not really talked about is like the UIC handshake, like how it works. So like you have to explore for yourself, like go on the website and see, like put keywords and it'll like give you like different options. So I feel like that's a hidden source. Yes, for sure. Um, for me, what a hidden source was, was um, it really wasn't hidden but I didn't really use that, utilize that much, but the African-American academic network, um, they really dive in and like really help you with that, with different like things that you need. Um, so yeah. Sorry, I would say that the LAS page and like going to events like these are very helpful because you get to see and ask reflect on it, also like self-reflection and asking you those tough, yourself that tough questions, as well as the UIC Connect. 
because that one is where you get you search out for mentors and people alumni who have been through there i also would say just like uh, going to like um lattice also triple a and and all these other resources that are available i would say those are the ones Awesome. Yep, those are all great ones that Wendy and I talked to students a lot about um, and refer students to. And this is the last question that I have for students or for the three of you. Um, what is something you wish you would have, you wish you would have known um, when you were exploring major options? Um, what would you tell your freshman self? So one thing that I would tell my freshman self is to go and meet your professors, talk to them, and explore like your resources that you have. I would tell my freshman self that um, make sure that you are utilizing all your resources, um, as well as diving, like making sure you're looking at what career you want to get into. So if you're taking a course, Try to get courses that actually sound interesting to you and, or then more so that's more easy to you um, so you can know what exactly you want to do in the future in the long run um, so you can plan it out and that also don't try to plan out your life to the extent where it's like you want to follow this guideline because your life is going to go through ups and downs especially us right now we all went through a pandemic we went through the biggest of this uh, down in our life so yeah I would say don't be afraid to ask for help because I feel like it was just like I felt like everybody else knew what was going on and I was the only one who was confused and lost and I was like why am I feeling like this like I feel like everybody gets it um but everybody's going through it like it's just like some people like did the research and you just didn't see that process and you see the like the end like their determination their passion and there you pick it out but like they did a lot of like reflection, research. So I feel like just asking for help is the best and like asking yourself these questions and like analyzing like, did I, why did I like that class? You know, I like the other one. Yeah, great advice. And what would, so it looks like we're getting a few questions in the chat. Uh, what would an average schedule look like? So, um, yeah, you could talk about your schedules um, more when you were like a freshman, sophomore, and then what it looks like now as an upperclassman. So during my freshman, sophomore years, I would have like class Monday through Friday versus now I only have class Monday through Thursdays and I only have like one class on Wednesdays and like I only go in person Tuesdays and Thursdays. My schedule is a bit more different just because I went to Jolie, uh, junior college. Um, but at first, my schedule was Monday through Thursday, but I did take about five classes. Um, and now uh, my schedule is Monday through Friday just because I took my language, uh, my language course and later on in the, the years. Um, and that's why I have a Friday class. Um, but typically, when you get into your junior to senior year, teachers don't really, well, CLJ professors I can speak on, they don't really schedule classes on Fridays more so than I, what I've seen, let me see. I would say that in freshman year, it was Monday through Fridays, and right now it's just from Tuesday to Thursday kind of thing. Um, my Tuesday and Thursdays are the most heaviest, and um, I feel like now it's just a more, before it was like lecture and discussion, and now it's just like discussion based for my class. Okay, and the next question from Juliana. Um, <clears throat> I'm not familiar with independent study. Can you go in depth with what that would be like in this major, just in case I might have to take one in the future? Um, and then can one of you explain kind of like the application process of, you know, finding a faculty member and um, those different things? And then Crystal, I know you haven't done one. So can you talk a little bit about 395 and the application process as well? Yeah, so for independent study, I also did CLJ 395. I reached out to a professor that was listed 
And then I explained like the internship I found and how it would benefit me. And I did schedule a Zoom meeting and we talked over it and it went from there. Oh, can you guys hear me? For the independent study, um, what what basically is is that you're look, that looking into something that um, I know it piques, my, piques your interest, but basically that piques your interest, um, and you talk to a teacher. So that's why I emphasize on have, having those relationships with your professors because that's going to actually help you with if you want to do an independent study. Um, so with that, um, I actually talked to Jessica Bird. We got into a Zoom call and then I had to sign a couple documentation to give it off to Yasmin, um, my advisor. And then afterwards we went on with that. So during the independent study, you're actually looking um, into what, what the question, your basic question is. So if mine's question is what is bail bond reform, I analyzed that and I just talked, discussed that. Usually you can either do a presentation or a paper um, I decided to do a paper just because there's distinctions in my senior year, um, but there's different ways you can actually do the independent study where you can go out and, and ask questions in public um, and then incorporate it into your independent study. So it's something that you're actually um, doing on your own, but the, the professor is helping you and aiding you to do it. Uh, what was my question for that? Because I haven't, I haven't gone into that right now. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, one thing that I wanted to clarify to everyone is, so we have a class, a course that's called um, CLJ 399. That is an independent study course. Um, so that's for any students that are interested in doing research. Um, and then we have a course that's called CLJ 395. So that is for any students who have internships and they can receive credit for it. Um, both of these courses are not required for the major. Um, we highly encourage them, of course, so that you um, you know, have an internship and then also do research with um, CLJ instructors and build those relationships and everything. And so um, these three students, <laughs> these three amazing students have, have done these experiences. And so Crystal um, has done CLJ 395. And so I wanted her to touch a little bit more on the application process for CLJ 395 since um, the other two students, um, Sarah and Afua, they touched a little bit about um, the application process for CLJ 399. Um, the application process with um, Wendy and I, it's a little bit similar, um, but 395 is just a tiny bit different. So I wanted uh, Crystal to touch a little bit on that. Yeah, um, I do have to say, I haven't gone through that process. Um, I haven't taken that class or like registered. I haven't gone through that process. So I wouldn't be able to like talk about it. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, I did take CLJ 395. That's why I was referencing to when I did talk about it. Do you want me to explain it again? Okay, so like for CLJ 395, when registration open, you see like a list of professors that are on the schedule. And what you do, what I did in my way, is like I reached out to them and I asked them if they can be my sponsor. And I explained what my internship was. And then they would schedule, I scheduled a Zoom meeting and then I explained to them how it would benefit me in the long term. And then it went from there. Awesome. Thank you. And sorry about that, Crystal. I thought you had. Um, okay. So the next question um, What is one tip you would give for those people who are struggling in finding a career path in this major? So I recommend finding like courses and like the majors that you may have an idea of and then try to find like an and if you can't find an internship take the courses and if you can find an internship that you may think that might be a possible thing that for your major go there. I agree as well I would say that um, you should really by choosing a major you should really educate yourself on the major options that you have. Write a pros and cons list. Um, consider your interests and passions, strengths, weaknesses, um, and make sure you're also like considering what you want in the future as well. Um, and also taking into account of talking to alumni, they will actually help you a lot in that case. Um, I know if you go to the UIC CLJ page, they actually have a list of alumni that are even in the grad program or PhD program that will actually be grateful like and help you in that case if you ever need help with that. 
my advice would be the same, just like reaching out uh, to professors, looking into the classes and seeing what the description is. Um, and if they call your interest, because someone might not really pique your interest, while the other ones they might be like super eager to take. And also reaching out to alumni as well. Great. So it looks like all the other questions have been answered in the chat. Um, do the three of you have any last words of wisdom before I pass it on back to Liz? Um, yeah, so the three of you can share any last words of wisdom, anything you want to share about CLJ, um, anything about your courses or anything that wasn't touched on that you think you would like to share. I one piece of advice I give just follow like what you're passionate about don't worry like about what others recommend go after what you love what you feel is right for you my piece of advice is that if uh it, if it feels right go into it um if you're just a little bit hesitant look and do research um it's never it never hurts to do more research on it because this is what you're going to be studying for the next three or four years um, and just find what, what interests you as well. I would say to uh, don't compare yourself to others. Everybody's going through their own process. And uh, like I mentioned before, you don't see it, but it happened. And like, just look into like your, yourself and be like, go for it. Like what could, what is the best to happen? Just like, um, you learn something new and you just learn if like that's something you like. So I would just say those are my advice. Great, thank you so much to the three of you. Um, and now I will pass it on to Liz. Um, and then she will be doing a raffle. <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, this was excellent. Uh, great advice and insight. I wish I had this when I was a student. Uh, and thank you, Yasmin and Wendy, for uh, the resources and insight that you've shared on CLJ. And I know Justin and I were on the chat box adding a ton of other resources. So there is a raffle. Uh, Justin, do you, I will do the raffle, but Justin, do you want to let people know what they're going to win? Or should I do the raffle and then you kind of share what it is? Sure, I have some of them here, but uh, we have many wonderful LAS prizes. So we are the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences, and inside some of these great, wonderful packs are some uh, gift uh, gift cards to the UIC bookstore to get any of your favorite uh, UIC uh, gear to wear to classes, whether it's hats, shirts, uh, whatever you would like to. Um, and there's a, a couple of other great assorted um, College of Liberal Arts and Sciences swag items as well. And so if you're a current student here at UIC, uh, we'll leave it for you to pick up uh, here at University Hall on our third floor. Um, if you're one of our admitted students, we'll uh, mail it out to you at your, your home address. Awesome. Must be present to win. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you see the, the spinning wheel on your screen? Yeah. Okay, I want to make sure I have like all these screens. All right, I'm going to go ahead. I put everybody that was in the, um, on the call. So let's see. So our First winner, because I imagine there's gonna be a few things. Oh, nobody. That's weird. I think there's like a we have a, <laughs> I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> That's so weird. I think Liz just wanted to win the prize for herself. Yes, that was for me. Juana Esparza. Is Juana on the call? Still here. I see Juana. She's Juana, here. yes. Juana, do you wanna put your um email in the chat box so that we can contact you. She's like, yeah, I won. <laughs> How many are we doing, Justin? Uh, we could do about five. Oh, OK. Want to put your email in the chat box so that way we can contact you. All right. Let's do another. The next winner is, oh, 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 Luis Olmos. Is Luis here? 
Chauncey Luis. No, no Luis, okay. Let's do it again. And the winner is Chosen. Now? <laughs> Let's try it again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And we have, it's gonna go to Crystal. <laughs> awesome. Well, we have Crystal, we have your information. Um, you know, I'm gonna, Wendy, I'm gonna ask you for a favor. Would you be able to, to write down the email addresses? Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Let's go ahead and do the next one. The next person is Nora. I think Nora is a winner and she is here. Ooh. Uh, Nora. Very cool. Thank you very much. Don't forget to share your email. All right. Next winner is Jocelyn. And Jocelyn is here. Yes. All right. This is great teamwork. Thank you, Jocelyn, because I don't see the participants because I'm looking at the Artists. screen over here. Wendy's getting the emails. This is great. And we got we got one more prize. One more prize. All right. And Juan, um, so I think gift cards are twenty dollars. So you should be able to find some good stuff at the UIC bookstore. I should have added my name to this wheel. <laughs> oh, oh, Alessandra. Let's see. Check. Yes, Alessandra is here. I think we got the winners. Wonderful. Thank you for playing. I'm going to stop sharing. And yeah, thanks everyone for all of the great students who were on the panelists today. Um, it was great to hear your experience as a criminology law and justice major. And then for our guests who are here today, I, I know Liz already posted it, but for some of our uh, admitted students or future students, uh, we are hosting another event uh, same time next Tuesday to feature some of our alumni of how they've kind of taken their career um, preparation here at UIC and how they've applied that into their future, whether it's in the world of business, in the world of um, going to graduate school and law school or um, a professional uh, program uh, and, and work, starting their work in the field. Um, so if you're a current UIC student, you can definitely just join through the Zoom link. Uh, if you're a future student uh, coming in fall of 22, uh, please feel free to uh, register on our uh, Discover UIC or UIC Bound websites. Um, so we hope to see many of you uh, join us next week and uh, we'll record the session as well. And for all of our future students, uh, both sessions, we'll share them out with all of our, um, all of our many admitted uh, criminology law and justice students. So you can catch up if you're not available next Tuesday. And uh, yeah, great. Thanks, Alessandra. I'm glad that you found it beneficial and informative. Um, and yeah, thank you to Yasmin and to Wendy and uh, to Liz Herrera. Um, so we have some really great people here at UIC who are gonna help support you and make sure that you can uh, have a wonderful experience here on our campus. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Crystal, Sarah, and Afua. You guys are amazing. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a great day, guys. Yeah, thank you for having us. Have a great one. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. Okay.